Let's get straight into the only story anyone was talking about today. And no, I'm not talking about me getting my third dimple. <laughs> I'm talking about the big showdown that everyone has been waiting for. Moment of truth, the Senate showdown between Brett Kavanaugh and accuser Dr. Christine Blasey Ford. This hearing, nationally televised, every single network, every single broadcast network, every single cable network, mm -hmm. all watching Dr. Christine Blasey Ford. If you're talking about the historic import of this and you're rating it from one to 10, you would give this about a 79. On social media, a ton of pictures of uh, commercial airlines where every television set in the seat back is tuned to these hearings. Yes, that's right. Even people on planes were watching the hearings. And it was so gripping that it was the first time people were praying for a delay. Even the flight attendants were watching the flight, like, get your own peanuts, get your own peanuts! <laughs> I don't have time for your shit right now. <laughs> now, I say it was gripping, but that doesn't mean that today was a fun day. Emotionally, it was taxing. If anything, it was like a sad Super Bowl. And what, what was sad about it was just, like, everything that was going on. Because today was all about Christine Blasey Ford. Right? The woman who came forward first and accused uh, Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh of sexual assault. Now, although everyone was preparing for testimony from Dr. Ford and Judge Kavanaugh, there was someone who uh, stole the, the spotlight in the beginning of the proceedings, uh, Judiciary Committee Chairman and Human Cornbread Chuck Grassley. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but at times, he acted like he was the one on trial. I think it's important to make sure you're properly introduced. Uh, by and the way, I have to. I was going to introduce her, but if you want to introduce her, I'll be glad to have you do that. But I want you to know I didn't forget to do it because I would do that just as yeah. she was about to speak. Thank you. You have another 30 seconds now because I was rudely interrupted. Something happened here in between on your side that the whole country, well, not the whole country should have known about it. No, not know about it. We should have investigated it. No, not, no, no, some, no, no. <laughs> what, what I meant was that, no, no, like, I feel bad for Chuck, especially in the beginning there, because he's trying so hard not to look like a sexist asshole that he's coming off as a sexist asshole. <laughs> he's like, be quiet, woman. I first want to tell you how important women are to me, okay? <laughs> and you shut up, lady, while I tell you how much I respect you. Hashtag woke bay. <laughs> but today, Today, no one cared for Senator Grassley as much as Senator Grassley did. Everyone's attention was on Dr. Ford. And she didn't just come in prepared to tell her story. She was also ready to respond to all of those people who asked, how can you even remember something that happened 35 years ago? You are very clear about the attack, that it was Brett Kavanaugh that covered your mouth to prevent you from screaming. How are you so sure that it was he? Uh, the same way that I'm sure that I'm talking to you right now. It's so just basic memory functions. Also, just the level of norepinephrine and epinephrine in the brain that sort of, as you know, encodes that neurotransmitter, encodes memories into the hippocampus. And so the trauma-related experience then is kind of locked there, whereas other details kind of drift. Oh, snap! <laughs> People were asking how the lady can trust her brain. Turns out she's a brain scientist. <laughs> yeah, those senators were probably like, oh, yes, we're also familiar with the, the hippopotamus. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> we also know that. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. Oh, and, and, and Dr. Ford also had a response for anyone who thought she's only here as part of her 2020 campaign. Apart from the assault itself, these past couple of weeks have been the hardest of my life. I have been accused of acting out of partisan political motives. Those who say that do not know me. I am an independent person and I am no one's pawn. My responsibility is to tell you the truth. You see, that's... That's something... That's something that a lot of people forget. Dr. Ford isn't some politician who's running for office. She's a woman whose life has been turned upside down since she stepped into this Supreme Court battle royale. She's gotten death threats, reporters flooding her house, and she's been called a political pawn, right? which is unfair to her and also to pawns. I mean, <laughs> I know this is not the time for me to address this, but still, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in on this. No, because people always act like pawns are the only pieces that get moved around the board. <laughs> but you realize that's every piece. I mean, if you're a bishop, your ass could be zigzagging all over the place. 
But you're still taking orders from the hand. Like, you're not special. I'm just saying the pawns get the short end of the stick. And again, I acknowledge now is not the time to get into this chess thing. <laughs> Forgive my grassliness. All right, where was I? <laughs> now, wh wh one of the main things that made today's hearings, uh, or hearing different, was that the Republicans brought in an outside sex crimes prosecutor to ask their questions, right? Because they wanted to avoid the optics of a sexual assault victim being interrogated by the world's most wrinkly boy band. <laughs> and <laughs> even as Dr. Ford sat through hours of grueling questioning, being asked to remember the tiniest details of something that happened over three decades ago, she still managed to remain surprisingly gracious and agreeable. I'm happy to answer in further detail if you want me to. I wish that I could be more helpful and that others could be more helpful and that we could collaborate in a way that would get at more information. I'm just happy to describe them if you wanted me to and I'm happy to not. It's just whatever you want. How insane is that? After all she's been through, like she still has such a good and warm attitude. Like I, I feel like after the hearings, she'd be in the parking lot offering to jumpstart people's cars. Do you want me to? <laughs> I can help you get home. So after four hours of Dr. Ford giving her side of the story, it was Brett Kavanaugh's turn. And I don't know if he's got something going on in his life, but he seemed really angry. This confirmation process has become a national disgrace. You have replaced advice and consent with search and destroy. The behavior of several of the Democratic members of this committee at my hearing a few weeks ago was an embarrassment. Last minute smears designed to scare me. I wanted a hearing as soon as possible to clear my name. I demanded a hearing. That's right, I demanded a hearing. <laughs> you didn't give it to me. I demanded it. Anyway, if you'll put me on the court now, I'm prepared to put my emotions aside and rule fairly and soberly. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think we can all agree I know how to handle my emotions. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, the contrast was striking because where Dr. Ford was more open to being questioned about her experience, this dude was behaving like the whole thing was just wasting his time. It's an outrage that I was not allowed to come and immediately defend my name and say, I didn't do this and give you all this evidence. I'm not even, I'm not even in D.C. on the weekends in the summer of 1982. So you're saying there's never been a case where you drank so much that you didn't remember what happened the night before or part of what happened? That's, you're asking about, yeah, blackout. I don't know, have you? Could you answer the question, Judge? I just, to... You, that's not happened. Is that your answer? Yeah, and I'm curious if you have. The Swetnick thing is a joke. That is a farce. Good Lord. <laughs> this guy was such an asshole, it looked like he was auditioning for a Snickers commercial. <laughs> it's like, how dare you accuse me of sexual assault? Hmm, I did it, yeah. <laughs> the feel. You could feel real Brett coming through, because I don't know if you saw the interview on Fox, he was all chilled out, and now today he was all angry, but you could feel him seeking through. And, like, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I don't know what the full story is here, right? What I do know is Brett Kavanaugh has been consistently shady about his history of partying as a teenage boy. Did you consume alcohol during your high school years? Yes, we drank beer, uh, my friends and I, the uh, boys and girls. Yes, we drank beer. <laughs> I liked beer. Still like beer. Sometimes probably had too many beers, and sometimes other people had too many beers. What do you consider to be too many beers? I don't know. Uh, you know, we, whatever the chart says uh, on your blood alcohol chart. Ah, yes, of course, of course. The blood alcohol chart, yeah. You know, the chart we all have at parties when we're drinking. Yeah, you know that chart? Yeah. Yeah, where you're just like, yo, man, hey, man. You ready? You ready, dude? You want to shotgun another beer? I would, buddy, but the chart says we've reached our legal blood alcohol limit. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> you telling me this guy was running around with calendars and charts? How big were his pockets back then? This guy was like a 17-year-old actuary? Like, because one frustration many people have is that we could get to the bottom of Ford's allegations much more easily if the FBI was allowed to investigate this whole thing, right? But we're not learning anything from this. And after watching this exchange, I don't know if finding out the truth is on Kavanaugh's calendar. Judge Kavanaugh turned to Don McGahn and to this committee and say, for the sake of my reputation, my family name, and to get to the bottom of the truth of this, I am not going to be an obstacle to an FBI investigation. 
I, I welcome whatever the committee wants to do because I'm telling the truth. I want to know what you want to do. I, I'm telling the truth. I want to know what you want to do, Judge. I'm innocent. I'm innocent of this charge. Then why would you resist that kind of investigation? Sir, I, I welcome... I wanted the hearing last week. Judge Kavanaugh, will you support an FBI investigation do, right now? I, I will do whatever the committee wants to... Personally, do you think that's the best thing for us to do? It was at that moment that Brett knew he had fucked up. <laughs> He wanted a beer so badly, but the chart said he couldn't have one. <laughs> that face is him giving himself. You can feel him coming out. It's so crazy to watch. And you know, I, like, I don't know about you, but I feel like we all hoped, maybe naively, that today's hearing would get us a step closer to learning the truth about whether Brett Kavanaugh is fit for the Supreme Court. But from the beginning, today was never gonna be enough time for us to get closer to the truth. This whole thing is rushed. There's not enough time. It was only gonna be enough time to make both sides feel better about how they were already gonna vote anyway. And nobody dug in harder than Lindsey Graham. What you wanna do is destroy this guy's life, hold this seat open, and hope you win in 2020. You said that, not me. You've got nothing to apologize for. When you see Sotomayor and Kagan, tell them that Lindsey said all oh, because I voted for them. I would never do to them what you've done to this guy. This is the most unethical sham since I've been in politics. And if you really wanted to know the truth, you sure as hell wouldn't have done what you've done to this guy. Really, Lindsay? The most unethical sham that you've ever seen in politics? Uh, phone call coming in. Merrick Garland says hi. 